Bioko Island is located off the coast of Cameroon. It's about 35 kilometers in the Gulf of Guinea. It's been isolated for about 10,000 years. When folks started working there, it had some of the highest primate densities anywhere uh, in Africa. It's a small island, and yet it has 11 primate species and subspecies, of which nine are endemic to that island, which is an extremely high level of, uh, of diversity for such a small place. There are many different things that could be studied on this island. I think that the, the questions to be answered, we're just really at the edge of even asking them. One scientist has been coming to Bioko for over 20 years. Gail Hearn started the Bioko Biodiversity Protection Program and has been working ever since to understand and protect the island's unique wildlife. Well, BBPP has been in operation, depending on when you say it started, probably started in uh, 1998. It started at a small liberal arts college, Arcadia University, and then moved to a large research university, Drexel University in Philadelphia. So, it has grown steadily from what was really just a temporary effort to protect wildlife became a major project. Ever since her early visits to the island, Gail has been collecting data on the primates of Bioko. Some of those species include the black colobus, the red-eared guenon, and the putty-nosed monkey. The island is also home to one of the most endangered species of primate in the world the endemic penance red colobus. <laughs> but there's another primate, however, that has drawn Gale to the island ever since her early years. Its elusive nature is legendary, and few have ever seen one in the wild. But it's become a flagship for conservation on the island. The Bioko Island Drill. Little is known about the drill, but through the work of Hearn, her PhD students, and BBPP, we're beginning to understand these secretive animals. And at a time when the forests are changing rapidly, this research is critical for the drill's survival. These large and intelligent primates are faced with extinction, often from a threat that Gale has battled for many years. The biggest threat to the wildlife of Bioko Island is basically the bushmeat hunting. Without that, they probably would be relatively undisturbed. West Africa, unfortunately, is probably the epicenter of bushmeat hunting on the planet. Primates are seen as a delicacy, not just a subsistence source of food, but really a species that sell for a premium in the markets. And so there's been an enormous hunting pressure on the island. I'm actually amazed that some of these species still exist, but in terms of its value for primate conservation, it's just you know, up there in the top priorities on the planet. It's really a hotspot within a hotspot. In order to learn more about the primates of Bioko and the threats that they face, Gail has been running an annual expedition to the island for 17 years. It is a unique opportunity for BBPP and Drexel to work with scientists from around the world. So it's like a worm, but strong. So my foot is... So some of the really positive things that I think are really great is that there's an academic partnership between the premier institution here, Unhe, on the island, and also with Drexel University, and they have a real long-term relationship with each other. I think there's great potential for educational growth, well, both the Aquato Ghanaian side and also on the U.S. side. Biodiversity is the matrix that holds the world together. You know, basically everything that we depend on as human beings uh, depends on a healthy environment and biodiversity in that environment. Biodiversity conservation is heavily dependent on a very small number of dynamic, dedicated individuals who really put their whole life into the conservation of certain species or particular areas. And Gail is just an amazing example of this kind of dedicated person. Without people 
like Gale, we simply would not have success in biodiversity conservation. If those animals survive into the future, it's going to be because of her and her dedication to that place. Through her dedication to academics, research, and conservation, Gail Hearn has showed us what one individual can do to help better our planet. It is now up to us to make sure that her work continues into the future.